Hey folks, we're playing Conquest of Elysium 5 again. We're doing the Voice of L. We're going to be on a large map in the Empire setting. We'll talk all about why we're doing uh, what we're doing as we do it. We're going to play with about 14 or 13 AI on count difficulty. It shouldn't be too difficult. So I get a little hiccups here. I'm going to try and get a purple color. One thing to note about the voice of L before we take a look at him is that you're not seeing my first attempt here at getting started. Uh, and that is a part of the problem with this faction. And I really think Illwinter needs, needs to rethink their start because they have a particularly easy death. Um, so here's what we have here. The voice of L, as it says here, is uh, essentially the kind of like play on like the Catholic Church in combination with a lot of fantasy tropes about uh, clerical organizations and things like it. So we're like a holier than thou faction that can summon angels eventually into the world. Uh, although we don't get a lot of control over them. We also get a plethora of like Templars and things like it. Uh, we get all these things through relics. We also use our relics to use the bless system. We convert settlements, which will always then give L a third of their income, or the Church of L. Unfortunately, if we're not the only Church of L, which we won't be on the Empire setting, that's one thing to note, is that there's usually going to be a Cardinal in the capital who's going to survive for a while, although I have seen him die pretty early um, before, but that's going to be subjective to us being near him and maybe a Troll King wandering in and killing everyone in the, cap in the Temple capital. So that isn't necessarily something we're going to get uh, early on, which means you gotta got to be a little careful with what settlements you might convert. What else we have here is a lineup of troops that have, as we talked about a second ago, a bless. And the bless system works really well when it comes to having a lot of numbers with the bless. It's not as good as a bless you might see on the Scourge Lord. So we're going to get into the nitty-gritty of some of that and try and dissect um, how good this faction really is once you get it off the ground, if we're able to do that, because it's very difficult to get these guys off the ground for reasons we'll talk about in a second here. The final thing I want to mention, as you guys may be pausing and reading this uh, for a second, this lore up here, if you're so apt, is that we also have... A lot of stupid units, um, the Crusade and the Inquisition, are unique in that we don't necessarily control them, but we can target them against particular things, uh, specifically with the Crusade. So we're going to jump into the game here. We're going to name ourselves Carl the Kind. I like that name. Feel free to suggest names to me as we play throughout the series. Um, this first episode is going to be the best place to do it, and then after that, uh, I can't promise your name will get in, but do suggest it if you have an idea. I will do my best. And now here is our starting stuff. Okay, this is really good. Um, you get this Archbishop. He has six hit points, which is a little higher than most casters you start off with as magic factions. But this is unique, and it's not like most magic factions. Although, they're all very varied um, in how their spells work. But this is even more unique, I'd say, than like any other caster faction. Um, in that it... Specifically, we start with this guy with a number of hit points that are kind of high. He's got seven magic resistance. He's got, weirdly enough, a funky scepter, which can actually do damage. A lot of your casters don't end up having anything special until you get a magic item on them for melee. But this guy can funk people in melee, but it requires you to get a lot of your bless to actually make him able to survive. Otherwise, you're really just rolling the dice and if he maybe kills one unit advancing on him. But that's not going to do a lot for you. It is thematically interesting that they get these scepters, and as this guy gets leveled up into a cardinal and eventually a plontiff, uh, all this stuff improves on his chassis, so he becomes actually just better without his bless even. But we do want to get that bless on him because it's going to do a lot for him. I do love the music, by the way. I'm going to turn it up a little bit because I turned it off for the weird intro song that I don't like. It's like feels like Celtic horns, and I just can't get behind that. Um because I hear it so often. Maybe once or twice I like to hear it, but not all the time. <laughs> uh, when we look at this, we can see that our spell list here, prayers, works off a couple of different things. Specifically, 
uh, we get access to conversion and mass conversion, which charm Hobergs and humans. These are the bread and butter of your faction, and it really is important that you play on an age, empire and below, so empire, monarchy, and new empire, where you're going to get access to independents that are human to build up early. Otherwise, you're going to be very, very in trouble for expanding. Because, as you can see here, we start off with a bunch of melee units. And if you know anything about Conquest of Elysium, or you've just felt the game a little bit, without having an archer core early on, you're in some trouble, because you're going to get shot up by the independents. But the nice thing is you have the conversion, but, you know, if you go up against, like, Bakmono or um, any other faction that doesn't rely on humans or uh, Hobergs, you're going to get kind of creamed early on. So goblins, kobolds, they're super dangerous to you. You don't want to fight them early because they're going to have the numbers and you're not going to have enough archers to ping through their numbers before they reach you and overwhelm you. Same with the Troll King, but the Troll King stomps a lot of people early. We're not an exception to that rule at all. We don't have any early fire or anything to charm him in particular, like the Witch would. The Witch is really good versus the Troll King, in my opinion, if she gets her charm spell. She can also turn him into a frog sometimes, so there's a lot of utility with the Witch. But we're not playing the Witch right now. We're playing Carl the Kind. Um, you'll see here that we have low walls and two archers, so... Our base is going to be super vulnerable, which means we're going to leave this dude behind to convert. Not seeing any early stuff to grab, which is not great, but we can manage. As always, guys, we talk about stuff as we get to it, so if I'm, like, not talking about all these early rituals, it's because I'm going to talk about them as we hit them. And unfortunately, we're in bumfuck nowhere here. Excuse my cursing. But, uh... We are in Bufu, Egypt. We have no one around us. Except for some dwarf workers now. All right. You don't want to see this generally, because this means the AI is getting resources while you are not. I haven't seen anyone eliminated either. Okay. Well, this is an interesting thing we could do. There's a Dark Citadel, which means there's a Necromancer. We could try and kill him early on with some conversion tactics. We're going to switch to Saving Grace, because that's going to actually protect us. And we're going to try this. This could go poorly. Our hope is our conversion uh, grabs these archers early. And also some Saving Grace will keep some of our numbers in line. There we go. Okay, we we'll grab some of the archers. And we're going to start switching these guys to our side. And this is going well now. Thank goodness. But unfortunately, they're all targeting the gate. And this guy is going to be left up here to shoot at us for a while. Because the AI doesn't want to move these guys off the parapets. So we've killed a Necromancer early. A Necromancer actually isn't a big of a threat. Because our other spells in our prayer school are healing spells and banishment. Besides the ones you've seen already. This guy has resist magic. This is the one other thing you do get as well. I saw someone hop over here. So we're going to be a little careful. Because I don't really know if I got a great glance at who it was. The Citadel's going to be nice because we're going to be able to keep a nice base once we can get some archers in it. But we're going to try and expand further. You don't want to stop with the elf faction in terms of expansion. You want to convert a bunch of humans to your side. Maybe not take so many losses. We only have 14 guys here. We can stomp through some farms. Easily kill those now that we have a small archer core. And I think the first place... I hope this doesn't mean there's the flying humanoid faction. The Aryan, Aryans or whatever. These guys are a little spooky. Launching on these guys isn't too difficult. Some easy pickups with farms. Oh, this is great early. Okay. So we're going to talk about this. Uh, this is our saint. She's terrible. But what she does do is she's stupid, and so she'll wander around like a madwoman, attacking things with this flaming sword. Uh, in Conquest 4, you got just the flagellants, and that was pretty bad. Now that you have the heavenly sword, these guys are really good. And they, they fortunately, or unfortunately, as we'll see here in a little bit, will end up converting settlements as well as they step on them. Which can be good, because if those settlements then get taken from you in the future... Uh, you can still get a third of their income, but that third of it income, as we talked about, is split. 
The High Cultist was killed. Kind of glad. We don't really want to fight the High Cultist again. We just did it in the Demonologist campaign and the Illusionist one, so uh, not my favorite to fight again. We're going to grab some archers here, try and protect this Dark Citadel. I really don't like seeing multiple Mountain Spires. Although, the Winged Humanoid faction tends to suicide themselves. Okay, guys, I'm going to say right now, this is exceptionally lucky. Usually, you wouldn't get two spawns of these guys early on. Which is going to set us up super nicely, though. So, I'm not upset about that whatsoever. I'm actually super enthused. This is kind of a big stack on this village. We might want to grab some more units. We'll convert some, but unfortunately, we have Saving Grace... Uh, something to consider. So you can see, we have multiple things to talk about. We'll talk about this first, and then we'll talk about the something to consider. So this is our contribution from L. We only get 23 gold, which means there's probably like around uh, maybe four L factions altogether, including us. <laughs> maybe the Cardinals getting a little bit of an extra share is what I think that is concluding in my mind, at least some coastal hamlets but you'll see this lady has converted this so every year we're going to get that tithe and we're going to get more and more portions of it as we kill other L factions it's like we have a senator and the other L faction we want to knock him out of the game as soon as possible what the heck okay are they breaking seals is that what's happening okay so this will happen. Um, the other L faction, and this is another benefit you can get, is going to break the seals. They can also go crazy with it. And if they keep breaking these seals, you might release the apocalypse. That's why we're getting so many spawn right now. Um, I don't think they've increased divine favor. Or does that start at 50? They might have increased divine favor as well. Which gives us more of our units and quality stuff as well. Ooh, what do we do here? I think we go try and grab this guy. Convert him over to our side if we can, or just kill him. Either will work in my book. Keep getting archers for base defense, and we'll probably grab some for our army. Okay. This is not a bad start. And you're going to see why L is really good in specific circumstances through what we do here. Unfortunately, they've upgraded their guy, which makes me a little worried. Because he might be converting, out-converting us here, potentially. I'm going to hope our guy prioritizes conversion. He's casting Saving Grace. Okay, now... Or was that him? It's a little hard to tell here. No, that's us. Yeah, that's us. He's casting Saving Grace, just to make sure. Yeah, we don't see the other guy in the logs. I don't. That was a little brain fart on my part. Oh, thank God. Okay, we've killed the other L faction. Um... We do not want them to survive very long. It's nice early when you can get them to open a seal, but... They'll go crazy with it. Unlock the apocalypse. They'll also steal a bunch of your revenue, which you don't want to happen. You like to keep your money, surprisingly. We're going to clunk through here. Uh, we're actually going to grab one of our bless items here. Oh, this is a great bless. Okay. So now, we're actually going to turn this on because pierce resistance is going to be real nice. You can see all of our units that have this bless tag will get pierce resistance. When we do greater blessing on our own units, they'll get it as well now. Uh, these guys are blessed as well. That is a really good early take. So You can see our little uh, saints are running around with their holy swords and grabbing stuff for us, also converting settlements. We're fine with it. This game is going exceptionally well, and that's kind of the two ways L games go, are either really exceptionally well or really, really bad. Because you either have things you can take care of, like humans. You can see that these guys are making kind of a poor decision. They got shot to death. The Baron has been eliminated. Or one of them, at least. Seen a lot of human stuff, though, so we might be pretty well set in the early game here. We could even try and grab a Baron if we're lucky. Who knows if we'll get lucky enough for that. We're going to try and convert some guys here. Pierce resistance isn't going to help us too much with the slingers. But uh, conversion will be nice if he can cast it. Okay, he got one slinger. We take a couple losses. The slinger dies. So we don't make out well there. So this is insane. This thing is wild. So what this is, is our holy sword. It's got pierce resistance. I don't know if it 
usually has that, or if that's from our bless. I think it might actually usually have it, because it's kind of a weird thing. But it's got five hit points, five magical resistance, four armor, which is really, really high. These levies are going to have a little bit of difficulty getting rid of it. It has a whole bunch of resistances here, and it has all these tags. It doesn't heal, but these will run around and cause a lot of attrition to our enemies. Um, you can see here, it just burst open this gate. Usually catching them in the field is going to be better. Thank goodness. Okay, there's a priest king in the game that has decided to kill one of our counterparts, which is nice. A dryad queen. We're seeing a lot because we have some of these dudes running around. <laughs> this does mean we can probably convert these towns more often now because we're going to get a larger share of the money that's available to us. We're going to save up some money, maybe get this guy... Uh, as a bishop as well, or we could save so much up that we try and go for an early cardinal. If this guy starts making um, monasteries, that uh, abbot, that would be really nice, but that requires him to find a temple somewhere. We don't want him taking our temple because it's ours. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of production right now, which means we're not going to get a lot of our... Uh, how Badir blessed units that are pretty good, these temple guards. And usually they're not super great, but now that they have pierce resistance, it's almost like they're running around with a shield. Because most arrows are gonna, or most range units are gonna be archers. And so he's gonna deal with them pretty well. You do have to plan appropriately for your yearly gold income, because otherwise you're not gonna receive a lot in between. What is up with this random mushroom? It made me think this was like a swamp gallows, but I look, look closer at it. I guess it's not. Um, what do we want to do here? I think we will just spend our money on some spearmen and grab some of these archers and go try and take that village out. Have some nice pierce resistance in our bless that'll protect us. All these guys are blessed as well, but they're going to have some trouble there. Oh, and he's already making monasteries. Goody, goody. So here's some of our more free spawn. We'll just get these flagellates every once in a while in some of our blessed communities. You don't get to decide where they spawn, though, so it's a little bit random. I'm going to go after this village, hopefully convert a couple of these guys. Not a, not a great bless. Okay, we converted an archer. We've lost quite a bit on this flank. So we kind of go a little faster for these expansion battles. If you've been on my channel a while, you've seen them before. 13 flagellants. We'll actually convert this, which will stuck us here for a little bit. Then we might want to go after the senator soon. If we can convert a commander from the senator or the baron, that would be really ideal. Because then we'd get the benefits of them. Because charm spells, as I just recently responded to a comment on the YouTube channel, actually... Uh, charm spells will provide you with the commander's benefits, where enslaved spells do not. Carl the Kind can move up north here, grab the settlement back. We're going to want some patrollers as well running. This guy can get an upgrade to become an archbishop. Ah, he got our healing spell. This is really good specifically for keeping outside of combat, your units healing quickly. So you can get into battles really quickly one after the other. Rather than wait rather than wait for healing, you can essentially heal quicker and go from battle to battle generally. Now, that just means you're probably going to take less attrition. You might have taken those battles anyway, but less attrition is definitely a nice thing to have. i grab this flagellate and run back here in a second. Our base is a little... Oh, thank goodness. Okay, all the other L's are getting killed. And that probably means we're close to just the capital cardinal who spawns in this age generally being... Old. He's not too difficult to manage. I'm going to overrun some boars while we have the movement. We'll grab these farms. We want plenty of places for our free spawn. We're going to march here and we're going to upgrade our bless again. Okay, this is one of the shittier ones you can get. So every blessed guy now has increased morale, which, ugh, waste of relics. Really a, just a total waste of them, in my opinion. 
We had a town there for a second from our respawn guys running around. You can see, though, you'll start to get plenty of these flagellates. And they can, st in the meantime, they'll defend our stuff. Right now, we don't super need to drag them around too much. Until we have more patrollers going. Oh, cool. An empty temple means more relics. It means more um, chances to spawn bishops, which are pretty important to your faction. Although, they don't do well against the stuff we're not good against, unless they get healing or saving grace. Which, those were not, you, they, they were not always a thing, so they used to be completely useless in Conquest of Elysium 4, besides the magic resistance spell they get against non-human armies or uh, whatnot, non-banishable armies, because we also get banished spells that work pretty well, but we haven't really seen any of those too much yet. A scout is definitely a priority. Love getting scouts. One thing I want to note is you're like, okay, maybe we could take this. I'm going to say no. And the reason I'm going to say no is because, unfortunately, how your conversion works, it's really low range, and the AI is really, really stupid. <laughs> and what he'll end up doing is he'll end up sitting, like, right about here, and when all these guys are dead and there's just these little guides on the side, he'll just stand here and let himself get shot to death. So you need to be a little careful about that. That's uh, something I've learned playing the L faction quite a bit. Is that they like to stand there and die. Um, <laughs> our uh, holy saint is taking on some whites with his flaming sword. I think if this is lifeless. Yeah, so it's not really going to take a lot of damage here. But our flagellates will get murdered. Oh, good. And our flagellate has got a magic item that we have no access to. That's uh, funny. Don't want that dryad taking off. But I also would rather take the free expansion up here for the moment. We do want to get a commander soon. Who can run around, grab flagellates, kill some of these f independent things, and uh, help us out here. Okay, so... This is insane. Our we'll go look at this in a second, but our uh, our flagellate has or our saint has found the capital. And uh, you'll see how the stupid tag works in action is that they will be very stupid, especially our saints. They uh, run out with a religious fervor. But the good thing about them is you can see they've scouted so much of the map already. We're 20 minutes in, right? You guys don't see this much of the map ever that early, really. And so, we already know where the capital is, so we can go kill that bishop when the time comes. Yes, yeah, so they're already running around with abbots, which means they're a little better versus us if they get conversion in their stuff. Ooh, a coal mine. Like that. But that is a... That is a... <laughs> A really good thing about the faction is you have an excellent scouting party who can actually fight. And they'll kill independents generally. Uh, they, they'll they suffer against other factions. Not doing the best. We'll continue to convert, seeing so many L's dead. We're still going to split some of the income, but hopefully our free spawn will make up for that. We have access to a bishop, but we cannot afford it. It's unfortunate. All this is converted by the other L faction, so that's nice. We don't have to worry about it. I'd love to circle back for that town one day. Some flagellates are going to die here. Not a big deal. I don't know how we're going to deal with this guy early on. These guys are really dangerous for us. We do not have the tools to deal with centaurs. Pierce resistance will be nice, though, because they work off a lot of pierces, but they also have their hooves. And these guys don't do pierces at all. So our flagellates are going to be essentially having um, the equivalent of a, a shield, pretty much, but, like, not, kind of, because it's not a roll. You were always taking half damage, which is a little odd, so maybe more equivalent to armor against pierce, I suppose. But then you also don't have a chance to fully negate it like you do with armor, so... A little complicated. 
don't have a lot of units up here. Grab this hamlet. Grab that farm, maybe. We'll see what the enemy does. Got a nice cold shot from that ice wolf at us. Okay, 27 flagellates, and they're all over the place. We want to grab these guys eventually, though. We're hoping to get a bishop. We also, if we continue to raise ourselves up the ranks, uh, we'll end up becoming a cardinal, which will give us, I believe, level 3 spells, and I think a bigger share of the gold, potentially. The Plontiff gets all the gold. We're going to see how these stack up against each other. They're going to get slapped. They'll kill Harpies a little bit, but they will get outmatched on the number of attacks they have. <laughs> and this is starting to get a little out of control. Let's make sure there's not another L. Okay, yeah. Other Ls are all dead, it seems. This is a good and a bad thing. Mostly a good, because we're going to get more money every year, and that's what we need now. Grab these flagellates. So you can see you'll build up a, a pretty good army of crappy free spawn. Since we have so many of them, we could do a bless. We see the Ballista down south. Okay, he's trying to take this, and he'll probably grab it from us. I'm going to wait for him to leave, and then try and attack him as soon as possible. So yeah, we're starting to see a lot of money going to L. We only get 81 gold, which means I think there's at least one L faction. I don't know why. Yeah, it, it must be at least one other one, I think. There's a You can do the math on it yourselves while you play, but I'm not going to take the time to do that. Okay, we got a hit point on our bless. This is okay. Uh, we're going to get extra hit points now. These guys are going to get two extra hit points. We're also going to get two, so it scales based, I think, on the amount of hit points you might have. But our caster is more tanky with a maximum of nine, and these flagellates now have seven HP, which, you know, is going to put them a little bit below the satyrs still, but uh, we can work with this. Let's hope this guy runs within our range. We will step right on here, grab ourselves some temple guard. We're going to make some nice frontliners. We'll chop people up with that pierce resistance. Ooh la la. He got a little too far away, but that's okay. Nice thing is, a lot of this stuff will be guarded. We got a whole bunch of money now. And what we choose to spend it on can vary greatly here. Oh, we're getting attacked. Uh, there's a decent chance they kill this. Depending on how their crossbow do. They did not do well enough. Early shots could have helped, but they did not manage it. Summer is longer. I think that means someone has stepped in one of the weird magic things. That one deer retook this. Is the commander available yet? No. We'll go grab that from the deer in a second. We'll grab this first. Uh, we do still don't have any trade, so it's not worth hitting that button yet. Go we'll start trading. What's nice, though, is now that our, our saints have gone and converted everything over here, it means we're going to get money from it. We also steal money from their monasteries, which is kind of funny. Steal a third of their income. Which is why you don't want to really build those too early with uh, the uh, Baron. Otherwise, you might have an elf action take a bunch of your money. <laughs> we'll take this bishop. Um, I think we'll immediately upgrade him. Ooh, okay, so you can see the banishment spell. This one only strikes three. There's better versions of it that I think are less uh, powerful in terms of negating. So he's really just a blesser. He's not super effective, but he is mostly going to run around and grab our flagellates and transport them to where we need them, or maybe go conquer stuff himself with them. We'll see exactly what we have him do. We're going to run down here and convert this since it's on our border kind of zone there. I'm curious what's up in the sky. I'd like to get an army going out of here. I also do want level 3 spells. We'll get ourselves some temple guard and start building archers. Uh, so this guy's going to go in like a madman. Get himself killed, most likely. Not doing much of anything. Uh, he might kill a high lord. Okay, he killed the high lord in the, the melee units there. It's not too terrible. It's left that place a little vulnerable. 
Although we need some archers to truly go grab it. Okay, let's run down here. So if you're starting to get a feel for this faction, what it does is it generates a holy hell of a lot of free spawn. And they will be your uh, early units. We want to save up our relics now because we're going to want to start getting some Templars. And I think to do that, uh, we either can break the second seal. I think increasing divine favor uh, will help more with that right now, if I'm not mistaken. Some of this I am playing by ear, as I recall it. What do you got here? Level 2 forest magic. Pretty close in the numbers, but they don't have a lot of actually decent units. These rabbits don't do any damage. I'm a little worried about things like sleep, but we'll chop through that front line relatively quickly. So I think we're going to take this fight. It's an easy kill on the caster with uh, probably minimal losses as long as she doesn't have two crazy spells. If she has sleep, it'll be a little irritating, but I think we can manage it. We're going to grab some archers here. We're going to take this town. Um, probably not convert it just yet. We have plenty of stuff converted for free spawn to pop up. It's got sleep and curse of the frog prince. That could get a little annoying. They have a heal spell, which isn't too big of a deal. Once we chop up these guys, though, we'll be all good. Which means we want our archers to attack them. Lost most of our temple guard. But uh, I think it's worth it to kill this thing. This is a pretty expensive unit, and there's some summoning and free spawn that we've killed as well. We've gained a couple frog friends. Although I have a little PTSD if you watch my Baron run from the frog spells. Uh, I don't think we'll run into the same issue here with the uh, Ryad. Hopefully not. Our dream is to not run into that issue ever again. Take most of the units here and go run them against the archers in that town next turn. Ooh, and maybe the Dryad is completely eliminated. May have taken some great part in doing that. 17 flagellates. We're going to take this and we'll start trading for relics when we grab it. We have an assassin available that we can't afford. We'll get some archers here. Uh, we'll leave like three of them so these deer creatures don't take stuff. We'll go overrun these, though, while we have the opportunity. Grab some temple guard. Now, I just, I want to just make it absolutely clear. This is not generally how your L start will go. Um, sometimes it'll go like this, but other times you'll get absolutely demolished. One good thing, we have Pierce Resistance now, so like these archers are doing half of the damage they would do. But if we didn't have that, and if we didn't have such good enemies to fight against, if we had Kobolds or uh, the Bakamono, or anything that can mass numbers or have a lot of physical damage early, we could be in a lot of trouble. Uh, we particularly do bad against, you know, things like the Illusionist until we can start getting more magic resistance up on our guys and things like that. But this faction usually struggles early. We just got fortunate in our start. And uh, sometimes you do function really well if there's a lot of L's on the map because they'll break the seal for you and you can prioritize other stuff like we did with our Bless. Just keep that in mind before you hop into L yourself. Go grab these eight and we'll just explore north a little bit. Okay, there's nothing here. We'll go south then. And we should start invading other people's lands, potentially. Oh, God. Is that a horned god? Oh, no, that's the hunt. Okay. Yeah, I got worried for a second. If you don't know, the druid spawns this for, like, 300 sacrifices. Um, he'll run around and capture ancient forests for them. He's actually pretty good at doing it, depending on the spells he gets. Although, if he runs into enemy armies, he could be in some trouble. So, he'll probably go try and grab this. Uh, seeing there's a druid, we don't do exceptionally well versus the druid. The druid could take off pretty quickly. This is not their age, though, so we don't have to worry as much about it. I could really use some more frontliners that aren't just flaggies. We'll uh, drop our frogs off. <laughs> we don't need the frogs in this army. They can defend that uh, settlement there.
Alrighty, what are we doing next here? So we get the basic Conquest of Elysium whistling song. Or pipe song, I suppose it is. Okay, plenty of guys here. We could go south and start dealing with some of this stuff, taking it over. Might be a good idea. I'm gonna get a big boost of gold here in the coming months. Move this way with Selize. Sesley? Sesley? We'll call him the Sizzler. Okay, the Baron got killed by the High Priestess. Funny enough, the High Priestess does have some human units um, that are giants, which is kind of interesting. You could end up grabbing. Do we want to get the bishop yet? I don't think we particularly need another commander at this second. We have people running in most directions except up north here. You can see we're walking into some of the Druid's territory. We can go snipe some early stuff from the Druid. That would be nice. Okay, we got a Holy Sword and a Saint up here. They should explore a little bit. Starting to invade the Druid's forest. This is definitely fightable, but uh, before we fight it... Okay, that's fightable as well. We're going to grab some stuff. Now, the more distance you put between the enemy and you, the less conversions you're going to get, but that's fine. We're going to bless up a bunch of these dudes. This frost magic could be a little dangerous for us. And we should have increased our divine favor. We'll do that next turn. But you'll see here, we'll start converting units. What do you have? Hailstorm. Oh, no. Oh, no. If we had blunt resistance, we'd be a lot better off there. Fortunately, we're engaging her in combat now. Because we converted one of the Viles. This guy's nice. He'll give us a little morale bonus locally. Ain't too bad. But most of these units aren't the craziest um, until you get them blessed. The flagellates are just terrible. Okay, we're getting attacked here by a high cultist, and he could actually be in some trouble. Because they're going to have trouble dealing with their heavenly sword, potentially, because it's mindless. And this guy's not going to hurt it. It does have soul slay, though. I think that might still hit it. Oh, it doesn't affect mindless units. Okay, maybe not. But it got meteored, and so it will die. We'll take out a couple of troops there. But we would like to go kill that cultist. Okay. Uh, oh, shit. We're the only L now, which means the temple has been taken over, probably by the priestess, which is bad and good at the same time. We're now going to get a holy hell of a prize. Let's talk about this guy. This is your pilgrim. Um, if you thought that our other stupid scout was good, this guy will run around Elysium like a madman. He will... He's One, he's really, really quick... Um, I don't know exactly how many AP he has, but he runs around like a madman and scouts for us and converts things. Does he convert? I don't remember if he converts. We'll have to check, but uh, he runs around like a madman, which is plenty enough for us. We have a decision to make here, and I think we'll make that decision becoming the Cardinal. Now, um, hmm. Sometimes the Cardinal can be really good. It's really good if you get his uh, true faith ability. We did not get that. Uh, instead, we get even more health. We get a bigger uh, punch with our scepter. And we also get level 3 prayers and 8 magic resistance. Bless really stays the same. Uh, we got the spell Healing Miracle, which is a burst 25, 1 to 3 heal. This is actually good. This was not in Conquest of Elysium 4, and now that it's in 5, it makes this guy much more viable. Before, it was either you get better banished spells, situationally those are really great, like this Divine Word that you see, or you end up getting um, Conversion, which is wonderful, the True Faith Conversion, which is really, really good. It's a big burst and will take out a bunch of guys on the enemy side and bring them to your own. Or you end up with the completely useless unless you're fighting like trolls smite and smite is really good versus trolls but it's not really good otherwise so that's kind of what you get with that guy most of the time we're gonna use this guy to increase our divine favor hopefully we'll start seeing returns on that now that uh everything or all the other l's are dead we could also start working on a lot of conversion because we don't have to worry about splitting the pot 
have the Priest King over here. We convert plenty of their units. Okay. Coming towards this deserted port. We have a chance to grab this guy, potentially. It's not very high, because we're likely to grab the units in front of him and they'll murder him, but... Uh, We'll see what happens. Also, we might just prioritize casting Healing Miracle and things like it. So Lise is going to move this direction. I think this army would do pretty well against taking this. An unlucky Meteor could hurt. We don't really have any spells to hurt him too much. We'll be out spell casted. But overwhelming odds means uh, we go take that, I think. So now that we have a Cardinal, something else has happened. And we now have access to Templars. Templars are pretty great. They have 16 hit points, 5 magic resistance, 3 armor. Um, I think they're getting extra hit points here, so keep that in mind. They're getting 2 extra, so usually I think they have 14, somewhere around there. Pretty low strength, surprisingly, but uh, they're es essentially just a knight who is blessed. So they have higher magic resistance and our blessing effects, which can get really good, like pierce resistance being wonderful. Uh, but that means they have the three attacks, that this is only usable once, and then they have these other two left. Um, so this is really good damage diversity, as you can see here, pierce, slash, and blunt damage. Uh, so resistances aren't as a big deal to these guys. They also uh, will run up in the battle, so keep that in mind. Other than that, uh, they're your exceptional frontline units, and they're going to usually stay that way. Um, they're probably going to be your frontline units for a lot of the game. We should start trading for relics. We haven't done that yet. We're going to get plenty of money here. We could go run this guy around and start converting these settlements over here. Maybe kill the fish person if we get lucky enough to do so. He stays on our shores. I'm going to watch a couple battles here. This magic stuff is going to hurt us. They're going to luck themselves, which is going to make them hard to hit. We'll kill most of their stuff before that. This guy's basically doing uh, only blessings, which means pierce resistance, which does not do anything in this battle. <laughs> All these guys are probably going to get mind burned. Uh, not mind burned. Uh, they're going to get that uh, stun paralyzed on them. Okay, this fight should go even better. He's casting sleep. He's got vengeful spirit, which is just a fear spell. If we convert him, then we'll have sacrifice economy going on, which could be pretty cool. But it looks like we're just going to murder him. Oh, no, he killed that guy. But we shot him to death. <laughs> Poor uh, Priest King guy. The Pale One was killed by the Druid. I'm a little scared of how this Druid is going right now. He seems to be popping off quite fast. Not that we aren't either. What are we looking at up here? We got an iron mine. This is a little light for what I'd like. But if I do lose that guy, I'm not going to be so upset. He doesn't have the best spell roster. I want to go take the capital. We're going to get some Templars. We need more of an archer core as well, but we can continue to move in the anticipation we take some of these to build up an archer core. And hopefully we can get a bishop here and convert anything that isn't converted that we'd like. I have no reason to chase down that Centurion. Okay, continuing to get these guys up here. Start converting these settlements. Come back and convert this. Because we're the only L now, it's really nice. Usually you want to be pretty careful with that, though. Um, don't have a scout here, right? No, we left our scout behind, darn it. Oh, no, he died, didn't he? Yeah, he died. We don't want to grab a scout. None of us have, like, acute senses or anything, so... I don't know if there's something really scary on this temple, and that's why it's not taken, or if just they haven't had the chance to do it. I will not risk it. That would be a bad idea. Lots of human independence. We could try and go grab this white mage through conversion. Not a super high chance of that happening, but uh, it's possible. Next turn, we're going to use our relics, and I think... Maybe, not next turn, maybe the turn after, up our bless. Could be quite nice. The fish person is attacking us. They don't have conversion, so I'm not super worried because these guys will get chopped up. Okay. 
I'm excited to review this faction, although this is going better than I thought it would, and it doesn't demonstrate um, the portions of the faction that are really weak that I wanted to talk about. This faction kind of struggles somewhat. We're going to start... I didn't mean to build swordsmen there. We're going to start getting frontier bases here that we're going to defend. Um... Let's go... Yeah, we still got one more turn before we can up our bless. We'll take out this guy. There's a lot of independents roaming around from these guard towers and probably remains of what the capital had. Although, I don't know if they've taken the capital proper. The cardinal that sits in the temple district is definitely dead as we grab a couple of these guys. Unfortunately, the ones we grab will slow us down, those triarii. Oh my god, the druid is murdering everyone. This is a super killable army for us. We're going to end up converting so many of these dudes. These guys have exceptionally low magic resistance, um, like most humans do, so... They tend to do pretty poorly versus conversion. And uh, the slaves have really bad morale, too, and it ch ticks a morale check as well. Keep that in mind. I think we go after them. We drop our Triarii and attack him here because there's a better chance that we maybe grab a commander like this. Um, we have 59, or 52 to their 59. We have better archers. We don't have blunt resistance, so we're going to get hit with slings. But I think our conversion will hold us up, and also congesting these jaguars is going to be for our benefit, I think. Um... That way, they're not overwhelming our weaker chaff units. Here, we're going to get hit a couple buttons. First, we're going to convert this, and then we're going to up our blessing. And that's nice. More hit points, which means we're now rocking three extra. Uh, unfortunately, these guys are going to have to heal before that comes into real effect. see a lot of druid stuff here. Hopefully she comes and converts these for us. That is the hope and the dream. Continue to build just some regular little guard towers to help us out. As we lift into the awful, like, bagpipe music. I can't stress enough, this is my least favorite track on here. So we're gonna get a lot of healing done here. Hopefully we're gonna do some conversion on the Slingers and stuff hitting us. Be ideal. Our Templars are going to be really hard to kill, although these guys do slashing, so... Their pierce resistance doesn't do anything against them. Okay, mostly our archers just taken off the walls. Not a lot of conversion. You'll see our Templars go to work against these unarmored Jaguars. Okay, they'll do some damage to us. They might kill a couple, but... Uh... We will win this as we heal ourselves. Though this guy might have been casting regeneration at all. What is their blessing? They don't have any blessing, okay. But he's blessing his units, which is kind of a waste. If it's just morale versus regeneration, you regenerate these jaguars, in my opinion. Nice, healing up our guys. We trade here in the middle. So some of their guys are regenerated, but they're mostly dead. Unfortunately, there is a maximum you can heal with this. Um, so they're going to stick at half HP, and this guy's probably going to die because he's run forward. Which sucks, but uh, you see a, a charm right there with a conversion, which is all nice. Probably won't grab this caster unless he regenerates himself and all of our Templars die. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get the caster. It's usually better if they stick up on the walls like that Tribal King was doing, but he got pushed back because he had enough units there. What's funny is, uh, if you get a good enough Bless and a bunch of magic items, you could, potentially against other human factions, kind of like, thug out the, uh, the Cardinal or whatever uh, Archbishop and run him around with a bunch of spells and maybe a, a thing that lets him cast in combat and uh, have him charm human armies and make them fight themselves. Although, I, I wouldn't advise doing that 
until your real, real understanding of how that's going to operate. It can be a little difficult to get that off the ground. Ooh, okay, usually we'd get archers here, but cheek pikes means we're getting pikes. Can't afford any more archers. And we'll go kill this army. Uh, we haven't given ourselves enough time to heal, but uh, our lances will tear through this front line, hopefully, and then charm and heal will make up for the rest. It does have poison web. We don't really have poison resistance. Take some flagellate losses, but it looks like our Templars are mostly okay. I think maybe we lost one before, I can't remember. Horn of Valor. Didn't see us get the Poison Wand. Or no, he didn't have a Poison Wand, sorry, he was using Poison Web. My bad. 34 flagellates, you can see them ever growing in our ranks here. I know the Druid's over here somewhere. Start converting this stuff. Hopefully get some flagellates start overcoming the druids uh, stuff as well. Might want to save our money a little bit. We're going to go run up on this stuff. I don't know if we need to take these watchtowers just yet. We might run up here. Although I don't love that the Balista is killing stuff. As we can see, there's house ruins down there. It's quite unfortunate when the Balista starts tearing apart Elysium. It means less resources for us in the future. We work on ourselves. So you can see we've pretty much fully healed up. We do have a lost eye Templar, but that's not too big of a deal. I think we'll go after this army. One of the big problems with the Senator is they don't tend to have a lot of archers. So they end up running with these weird lines with maybe a mage behind them. I would not build armies like that personally, but uh, to each uh, their own, the AI makes some strange decisions sometimes. This does mean our income is going to be on a yearly basis, but I can accept that for having it secured at least one third and also giving us more free spawn uh, opportunities in different places. You're going to start to see a struggle with that druid, though, depending on how high he gets up here. Here, though, is where we, we rule. We rule versus humans and hobergs. No big deal. Oh, we killed the senator. It's a shame. I would have loved to shown you guys what it looks like to uh, tame the senator himself, but it looks like he died before we even got to him. So we're having none of that this game. Means we can run up here, take this town, probably take all this stuff. Start getting more stuff going. Continue to get some archers in these bases. You can start moving south. Four frogs. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, yeah, we probably want him up here as well. Bunch of flagellates that have been spawning over here. Why are none spawning here? Sometimes flagellates spawn here, but I guess they're not choosing to. So many other opportunities. Um, we probably want to save to either... We could break a, the second seal. We do want to be careful, because L can bring on the apocalypse... Playing a little risky with Salise, an empty city, not unusual for a druid to leave cities empty. But uh, we'll take it and convert it. Almost immediately. That'll give us more relics in trade and just by having this. That's nice. Oof. That's the one nice thing about the druid is he tends to sequester himself. Oh my goodness. Picking over the scavenged remains of this empire down here. I love it. Absolutely love it. Scrab. Okay, we already have all the flagellates. Let's go overrun some snakes for fun. Oh, we don't even have enough to overrun them. Kill them, though. Okay, the Priest King is moving in on us again. 39 flagellates. Oh, goodness. And this is his big army that we will not actually do very well against. Ooh, we have to think of a way to defeat this. Our heals will be nice, but these guys will tear apart even our Templars. We'll be on the struggle wagon for a little bit here. Let's break the second seal. Okay, no apocalypse or anything. I don't usually see it until the third. 
Time we break the seal. I kind of want to go up the mountain spire and just take a look. You can see our pilgrim has actually won us a silver mine that was empty up here, which is pretty nice of him. Down here, we're going to recruit some archers. We want some more defense in the city. We might chill Salis uh, out here for a while as uh, our iron mine was taken. Hopefully he goes and attacks this. Lots of Priest King stuff. He's got a human army behind it, though. Which will be much better for us. Okay, that's dead. Oh, no. Face spiders. Aw. Poor thing. Got our entire contribution. Love to see it. Means we have a lot of money rolling around with it. Plontiff won't be too crazy. Um, I do want to show you guys a mechanic, though. Um, it's time for a crusade against the Priest King. Um, but guys, for you to see the crusade, you'll have to join us next time. As we continue to conquer Elysium, Carl the Kind's going to take uh, a direction this way, most likely. Probably not face off against the Priest King immediately. But we'll see what the crusade brings as they start to appear here. You can see, um, here's our crusader. Uh, this army isn't that crazy, but uh, rest assured he'll do some damage to them. Uh, debatable whether it's not worth the 200 gold depending on how they behave. But uh, we'll start seeing that crusade pretty soon as they run down towards their designed enemy. And uh, yeah, we can't call another crusade until uh, this is ended, but... Uh, our holy followers will uh, end up going against them. We're going to make some L recording saves. L the record. And we're going to do a backup L. Oh, God. I saved over uh, a, our uh, one of our... Uh, what was it? The Scourge Lord saves we had going for uh, practice. I don't know why I wrote slave. <laughs> uh, slave to L. We'll do that. I almost meant to wrote save. What's wrong with me? Um, do not save over. This is our safety. They should be next to each other, but we didn't do that. Guys, thanks for joining me for this first one. We'll continue to go over L. Um, one of the weaker factions in the game, situationally speaking. Um, but really good if you get into the right situation. We're going to continue to see that. Um, in the future, though... We're going to have some interesting battles with stuff that we don't have a lot of answers to, which are these big tiger, th jaguar things, these bollums, and the druids stuff. We had a lot of early enemies we do well against, but we didn't go engage them very much. Um, opted to use caution, and that is rested maybe with the better um, decision, given that uh, all the other elves got eliminated and they converted a bunch of stuff, so we're getting a bunch of gold. But uh, for you guys to see more of the results here, you'll have to find out next time. Thank you for watching. Give a like and subscription if you enjoyed it. Um, otherwise, leave comments for names, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us.